Welcome, ladies and gentlemen. We are here with another podcast. Except this one is behind the scenes for Universe Mode. We're back. Turns out I did another pay-per-view, so... Talking about it now. And what a pay-per-view it was. I'm going to post ratings um, after I record this audio. Uh, in the comments below the video. Uh, not this video, but uh, the TakeOver show. At least I don't want to, I think. And I want to... Well, I'd love to hear your guys' opinion as well on the show. But um, we opened up with Tyler Wolf uh, versus HBK. I had this match planned uh, since before SummerSlam, just before. My idea was Tyler Wolf was going to attack HBK, and uh, later on, uh, so basically they're going to challenge for a third, or they're going to fight as GMs for a third time. But Tyler Wolf doesn't want it to be at Survivor Series. He wants to shake things up. He wanted to beat Shawn Michaels, go to Survivor Series, and fight a different opponent. So Triple H said, whichever GM wins. At TakeOver goes to Survivor Series to represent their brand. So in this case, Tyler Wolf did win, and he's going to take over, or to Survivor Series. Triple H announced three names that could be chosen. Uh, Ross Young, Yuri Yamashita, and Mr. Samuel as his potential opponents. So far, Mr. Samuel has two votes. Ross Young has one uh, for the match at Survivor Series. So, there's that. Uh, HPK versus... Tyler Wolf was really good, pretty good opener, good warm up uh, to the show. HBK lost. Tyler Wolf won. Tyler Wolf advances uh, to Survivor Series, so he will represent his brand, SmackDown, and whoever the replacement is voted for will represent Raw. So there's that. And one more thing about that match was uh, in the build up toward the fight, I was gonna have Triple H because he announced. Uh, the three names on SmackDown. Uh, I planned for Undertaker to appear there. And that's when The Fiend would attack Undertaker. So Triple H basically would say, Oh, I choose Undertaker as your opponent. The Fiend would attack Undertaker. Triple H is the panic button at Survivor Series. And it would be more of an impromptu vote from you guys. But I decided to change it. I had Undertaker fight me instead. And that's where The Fiend attacked Undertaker at Backlash. So... Adjustments were made <laughs> uh, for this feud. All right, moving on to matchup number two: the Saito brothers versus Oni Lorcan and Shane Thorne. So I'm gonna be honest; this was filler. Uh, I didn't really have a decision on this match until after uh, the takeover, basically building up toward Backlash. I made this decision for the Saito brothers because I knew that they were gonna be fighting. Uh, it was going to be a long time till the second round. So I thought, you know what, why not keep him on screen for another challenge for a takeover. Uh, give the character, continue the character's exposure to, to the series and give him a good match. And it turned out pretty good. Uh, there was some back and forth. Uh, another great start to the show. I thought it was really fun. Enjoyed it. And it, the momentum just kept going <laughs> from there. But uh, it was great. I really liked it. Uh, so this was more of an impromptu, but I added the stipulation that if Lorcan and Thorne beat them, uh, they would take the place of the Side Two Brothers in the second round, which is huge, but ultimately uh, the Side Two Brothers won, continuing to remain undefeated, so there was that. But yeah, it was more of an impromptu match, but still tried to add some stakes to it uh, for there to be some investment into the match. All right, so... Interesting thing. NXT Women's Championship matchup number three. My original concept was it was going to be Ronda Rousey versus Dakota Kai versus Maria. I was thinking Dakota Kai would win the championship back on NXT. Unfortunately, I tapped out. So I decided, you know what? We'll just go with Maria versus Ronda because I tapped out already with Dakota. I planned for Maria to win anyways, despite the triple threat match. But it was supposed to set up Ronda Rousey versus her one-on-one -on -one down the line. Turns out we got that one-on-one -on -one anyways, <laughs> here and now. <laughs> so it didn't have much build-up. Well, kind of did. Because Maria was kind of on a dominant role. I'm getting off track. But uh, 
she was she was already kind of in that dominant role of attacking people. I really liked that it wasn't as good as the first two matches, but they had the spots. I, one of my favorites was off the top rope through the flaming table. Uh, Maria broke down Ronda with the usage of weapons over time. Ronda slowly broke down, couldn't utilize her sp submissions as much as Maria was using her weapons. So Maria was in her in character's element, and that allowed her to pick up the title to become NXT Women's Champion. So I thought that was really good, uh, especially for the women, because they typically don't have great matches, although they have pretty decent ones at times. They're pretty consistent. So the plan evolved last minute. Uh, <laughs> Over this weekend. But, um, Cruiserweight Championship. Man. Man, oh man. Leo Rush versus the champion Kyle O'Reilly. So, I planned for Kyle to be on this show anyways uh, for quite a while. Uh, it was around Clash of Champions. No. Mm, no. No. After Clash of Champions. It was right around Backlash when I made this decision. Basically, when he won the, cru when he won the Cruiserweight Championship... Uh, I made the decision that he was going to be at this takeover. He was going to carry the belt to here. Uh, and Leo Rush was kind of the opponent where I was like, you know what, I could probably bust out a pretty good match with him. And they did. <laughs> uh, after the match, uh, Kyle got attacked by Kevin Owens. It was originally going to be Jack McKay, but I switched that for a reason I can't say until after Survivor Series. But... Uh, this forwards, this really takes a big step uh, toward the breakup of O'Reilly and the Undisputed Era because Kevin Owens is part of the group in this story. So now Kyle was, is most likely going to want answers. Um, and there was a bit of foreshadowing that I put within this within this match. No longer wearing the Undisputed Era attire for this match. So there was that foreshadowing of him just not wearing them, but the colors of the Undisputed Era, but... Yeah. I really liked the match. It was great. It was probably with the match of the night or close. But uh yeah, it was really good. Uh, this had long term kind of kind of long term. Uh I knew what I was doing with Kyle's cruiserweight championship reign, had it kind of laid out and he got attacked by Kevin Owens is in the hospital and now it's questionable whether he will be at uh, Survivor Series or not, which is the big question. All right, so that's the first half of the card, and we're going to go on to the second half. Whoop, whoop. Wow, we're making good a time. Um, all right. Matchup number five. This was the Dynasty versus Cole Quinn and Christian. Now, my original plan was for the Dynasty to just retain. However... Looking at how I'm booking everything, how do I steer through this without giving away spoilers? Looking at the future, we'll go vague, we'll go pretty vague. I figured that it was better to have a trial of tribulations or a hit a low point for the faction right after they hit a rise or their peak uh, very quickly, so it comes as a surprise. Only for them to pursue their rise or their their second r run, so or their second attempt at rising to the top is now class part EC3 and Austin Arians have all gold and they feel on top of the world. And I felt I was originally going to keep them, but the change was last minute. So uh, I was planning for Cole Quinn to get pinned. Actually, I was thinking Christian was going to get pinned first. In this elimination match. But after what happened on the NXT show. Where Cole Quinn got busted open severely. With the uh, top 1%. I was like. Top 1%er by EC3. I was like hey that works perfectly. I can't edit his attire to have like the bandages on his forehead. But I can basically say. Oh he has staples in his hair. Or, like whatever. And uh, that's what EC3 did. He targeted his head. Managed to get the 3 count. And three count. Uh, and then that left Christian all alone. Christian basically barely surviving, but then manages to score a roll up on EC3, and then beat Austin Arrogance after Austin kicked out of uh, one the spear. I think he kicked out of the spear, and then got beaten by the kill switch. But everybody looks strong. Uh, Cole Quinn had the excuse of being hurt, so it was like 
actually makes uh, pretty good sense. It was a really good match. I'm debating whether or not to rate it five stars or not. It's going to be close, uh, but it was awesome to me. I really enjoyed it. Um, yeah, I changed the last minute only because I know what's like I I'm looking forward and I'm just like you know what. If the match is great in their sequel, then I can try to pull off a third to end the trilogy down the road. Uh, so the dynasty uh, continued. Plus, this wrote off, um, this decision wrote off uh, Cole Quinn for me because he was hurt from the NXT match. I was like, okay, I'm definitely not going to have him win. He's probably going to be the first to go for my uh, North American Championship match. That's that's later on. I'll get to that when I get there. But um, yeah, it was it was um, that was a tough call because I like both teams and the feud. This was definitely the redemption match for when the dynasty won the titles in terms of match quality because it wasn't it was all right, but now it was like oh this is really good. So to see that, it just makes me more confident in my abilities, or at least more confident that we can see, try to have a resolve in the feud rather than just uh, Christian and Cole Quinn losing uh, back-to-back and just ending the feud. Plus, the Dusty Rhodes Tag Team Tournament is going on. I had a, <laughs> I had a team in mind that I wanted to book uh, after them, but I felt that, ooh, based on how the Dusty Rhodes Tag Team Classic is going to go, if they lose there, um, it might hurt the the dusty roads tag team classic down the line so i just figured you know what we'll continue the feud between these two teams it's fine it'll work out this match will be great it will be great it'll be great and it was good i really thought it was good and we it's a bounce back for both teams both teams look strong neither team looked too weak uh easy or cole quinn looked weak because you know he was hurt in the head so it made sense <laughs> At least to that, if I simplified it like that. Um, matchup number six, Jackson Wilkins and Christian Bain. I had this match planned, I think, just before Backlash. I did a lot of the NXT TakeOver planning uh, right after probably the first NXT show or right before the first NXT show. This match I wanted to do as not just a way to uh, bring them back on screen, but try to... Uh, re-energize the interest in him because I took them off for so long which I did not intend to originally I did not intend when I started the season to uh, take them away for so long but I felt that the characters make uh, fighting each other to deciding whether or not to stay as a team or not made sense um, or I thought it was be it would be a fun match uh, to do on the card as well but Kind of the importance of them is that they haven't won any championships yet. They made a promise that they would remain a tag team until they their first championship win, which would be the tag team titles. That was always their dream. They failed in season five. They failed in season six. And now they're sitting at, there at the point where they're thinking, you know, do we really want to stay as a team if nothing's working out? Or do we want to pursue our own success? So Jackson Wilkins and Christian Bain basically wagered and said, yeah, listen, we can't decide, so we'll have a match. Jackson, you represent us staying together and entering the Dusty Rhodes Tag Team Classic. Christian will represent, or the Ox, Christian Bain, will represent um, uh, their uh, breakup. So yeah, it was a fun match. It was a way to add some stakes to... Uh, stakes. <laughs> stakes and weights. Stakes and weights would be Otis Dijakovic's phrase, but yeah, whatever. Not Dijakovic. Um... Dozovic, jeez. Ooh, I'm getting confused with Dominic Dijakovic. Ah, whatever. Who cares? <laughs> they're the same. Except they're insanely different, mad. Shush! Stop speaking. <laughs> Nonetheless, um, yeah, matchup number six. I really wanted a more high profile match, even though it doesn't feel like it it still carries their story on so now you know that they're entering the dusty roads tag team classic in this set of two nxt shows before the next takeover so they'll be back in action they'll be back as a team it won't be like a out of nowhere like oh they're back oh okay now you have the kind of them being brought back on screen so we 
I reminded the audience that they're alive. <laughs> um, yeah, so it was, that was the big plan behind that match. All right, NXT North American Championship match. Whew. This and the NXT Championship match were both planned right around SummerSlam. I had I had a vision, not a vision. Uh, I had an idea of where I wanted to go uh, with it. Basically, I knew that Jack was going to vacate the title uh, at that point. So I was like, you know what? We'll just set up like one-on-one -on -one matches. Uh, the winners will go to the NXT Championship match. And the losers, I'll hype up at first like they get nothing. But then swerve because Chris Hall becomes such a jerk. Or I write him in such a way that Mr. Samuel's basically like, you know what? All the losers of that tournament are going to fight you. So that's what happened. Chris Hall... Um, Kind of ran rough shot, attacked Ace, uh, which made sense because you know, he's, he beat Ace for the champ North America Championship, so he just attacked him afterwards to try to cost him his opportunity in North America or make a statement at the end of that first show. Uh, kind of did a promo where he was talking a big game against you know, Mr. Samuel, myself, the commentator, and all the other legends. Kind of just saying that he's the greatest. So then Mr. Samuel on the previous NXT show was basically said made the announcement that uh, the four losers of the of the uh, one on one matches on the four one on one matches would fight you. Chris Hall basically makes that decision of all right, you know, I'm gonna take out Ryan Shrap after his match to basically neutralize one person. And I I dorked up the spot, but I was gonna throw Ryan Trap off the off the limousine, and then basically describe it as his head gets put through the car window and his hair got cut. So because of a mild concussion, Ryan Trap is gone off screen. That makes it a fatal four way, and it doesn't help that Cole Quinn. Well, it actually helped storyline. Cole Quinn got battered uh, in not just the tag team match, but also EC3 hacked him open. Uh, on NXT, so it stood a reason that Cole Quinn was probably going to be destroyed. And you know what? Considering I wasn't controlling him, I thought it worked out because I was kind of sitting there thinking, man, if he hangs in there, you know, it could still be pretty awesome. My plan was for Haruto and um, Chris Hall to be the last two standing. I wanted to face and he and the heel champion uh, one on one. Didn't work out that way. Johnny Rivers caught uh, Haruto with that. DD, elevated DDT on the uh, ladder, which actually was a pretty good spot, but it was just one of those things where I'm sitting there thinking, dang it, dang it, dang it, dang it. I wanted Haruto and Chris Hall, but whatever. Um, so yeah, Chris Hall was scheduled to retain anyways. Uh, the attack by Mac Allen afterwards, that was originally going to be saved for the following takeover, but I actually thought this was pretty fun to do anyways so basically now the question uh for chris hall that he's going to be going around at nx basically chris hall is going to be asking you know how the heck did he uh mac allen or the question uh, i should backtrack sorry the question that i was trying to make you all have in your minds is how did mac allen get security or uh like you know, swat gear why was it, like how did he get in the building if he wasn't medically cleared and, yeah, I think those are the two questions. I think I had a third, but I can't remember. But Chris Hall is going to try to answer, get those questions answered because it's trying to make you think of, like, okay, if Mac Allen isn't clear to compete, then he's not officially back yet. It was him basically firing a warning shot to Chris Hall that he will be back soon and he should be afraid. That's kind of what I was going for. But yeah, it was. Uh, it also it also was to keep him, Mac Allen, fresh in people's minds, especially since the next takeover is so far away, and he's not scheduled to be back for, at the very least, uh, till the next takeover. So it was kind of like, you know what? Instead of waiting like eighteen, possibly eighteen episodes to bring him back, he'll make a quick appearance, nine episodes in between, to still keep people uh, hyped up when they look back at the match still have invested interest in it so the wait isn't too long and i'm not i'm not saying that you guys have a low intention span that's not what i'm saying at all <laughs> i was just saying that um 
because I saw what happened with Jacob Knox where I waited so long, so long, so long. Like I held it off and uh, people kind of forgot. <laughs> I was thinking, you know what? I'm going to try to keep striking the feud while it's hot. So it also gives something for Chris Hall to talk about leading up to the next takeover. Da -da 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 -da. Like it adds more uh, to the storyline that's going on with uh, the North American Championship. All right, the NXT Championship, the moment of controversy. Well, I shouldn't say controversy. It was pretty straightforward. <laughs> so, uh, the winners of the tournament I already had picked out. It was Jackson Wolf, Ace, EC3, and Jacob Knox. So, I already had Luke Harper scheduled to cash in no matter what. So, I was at first I was thinking, you know what, I'm going to do it before... Before even backlash, I was saying or thinking to myself, this is just going to be a shoot match, as in you just do it, and whoever wins, wins, because I was thinking, ah, what's, who cares? Like, these are all, these all can work out. All these names can work out, they're going to be cashed in on anyways. But then as I got closer, I was thinking, no, no, I can't do that. I struck off Jacob Knox first from even winning it. Uh, mainly because if he's in the NXT champ, if he wins the NXT championship and doesn't resolve his feud with Jack McKay, seems kind of weird. Seems like he all of a sudden has two branching storylines at the same time, which I could do, but it's just. Mm. And I know some people could sit here and say, "Oh, well, Jack would," because Jack McKay basically hospitalized uh, Jacob Knox for half the season, first half of the season, Jack McKay vacates the NXT Championship for the specific reason that he wants to build up NXT's talent. He wants other people to rise to become stars. He doesn't want to be the champion. He only won the championship to get a favor from Mr. Samuel. That's it. That is it. That is the only thing. That's the only reason why he did it. He wouldn't have tried to win the championship either uh, any other way. Because now he gets something. So his logic is that he wants to rebuild NXT, but by not being champion. He'll be the villain, he'll be the hero of any story that he needs to to solidify these guys. Right after he vacates the title, Jacob Knox attacks him. Jacob Knox attacks him after again on NXT after um, Jack announced the matches. Uh, the one-on-one -on -one matches. So... Logically speaking, if I'm using logic here, why would I book the championship on Jacob Knox when his storyline with Jack McKay isn't done yet? And I know some people could be sitting there saying, well, just put the title on him and have Jack McKay chase him to become a two-time champion. No, no, no. That would be a bit, that would be backtracking Jack McKay's established, char and established character. That would be going against his motivations. He doesn't want to feud for the championship. He doesn't want the championship. Why would I backtrack the character? Just to continue the feud. It seems like a regression of the character of Jack McKay. One of the things less interesting, or that would be one less thing that's different about him compared to everybody else. Because he doesn't want the championship. He doesn't feel like he needs it. He feels NXT needs him to be whatever they need him to be. Outside of the champion. That's the whole thing. He's trying to build up the talent. So he beats down the, the who he views as the pretenders. He you know, beats down the guys who he feels needs a motivation. Ja Jacob Knox was a bad guy who didn't have a motivation or direction. Jacob Knox, gave, or Jacob Knox was given that motivation by Jack McKay because Jack McKay hospitalized him. That's the logic that went behind why Jacob Knox shouldn't win the title. As a matter of fact, I also decided he shouldn't be pinned at all. He should be on the outside or uh, one of the two people that isn't involved in the decision because I still want to protect him. So now, based off of this, he's going to feel that he just can't get over, like what cost him was the fact that he can't get over his obsession or his heart wasn't, wasn't in the fight because he still can't get over the fact that he needs or he feels he needs to get revenge on Jack McKay. Simple as that. So, to me, he was the least likely to win. 
strictly because of that whole storyline going on. He has completely struck his name off the list of possible winners. Although he still could have won, and I probably would have had to really improvise that. <laughs> uh, the next person was EC3. No. No? No. I should consider EC3. Ace, I really considered. I was going to pull the trigger on him here, but I decided against it, saying no. No, he still needs... We need to hold off on him just a little bit longer. Just a little bit longer. Can't pull the trigger on him just yet. Didn't feel right, so I decided, you know what? He shouldn't even eat the pin. So he and Jacob Knox, to me, had to be outside of the decision. Uh, so that left Jackson Wolf and EC3. Ace, basically, I, I can't go too far because I have... Or I'm trying to write plans for uh, the next takeover. So I don't even have everything solidified. But um, Ace, I'm trying to write plans for to build him up to the top tier. So he's close, but I held off for this. Because I felt like mm, it, it didn't feel satisfying enough if he wanted here. In my opinion. But, uh, so that left J Jackson, Wolf, and EC3. EC3 I deeply considered. Uh, mainly because... Beast of the Dynasty, uh, but then I decided, you know what, if he eats the loss, I'm thinking it during the show, if he eats the loss um, in the tag match, by a roll up pin, he still should be relatively good, and still kind of battered and beat up, so he's not going to do as well. At the same time, during the championship match in NX, on the NXT title match, uh, there was like this weird glitch where it looked like his knee buckled or whatever. Uh, so I tried to sell that as like, oh, he's you know weakened even more because he got himself hurt doing a move. So he's the the bad egg in the match that can still take it because, I mean, he got rolled up to be eliminated. After lasting so long in the tag team title match. And then if he's the guy to be beat. And then he got crippled uh, in the knee. Or not crippled. But uh, he got hurt again. Except this time in his leg. It's like well it seems like the obvious choice to take the pin. So I pulled the trigger on Jackson Wolf. Um, kind of like in a heartbeat. I chose Jackson because I was. Or I chose EZ3 because I was just like you know what. I don't know which one I'm going to do. Either way I'll, I'll either get the pin. Or I'll take the pin. When I saw that injury, I was like, great, that's an even better reason for why Jackson Wolf can win. Uh, the match could have gone on longer. I wasn't too happy with it, but literally the perfect opportunity or the opening uh, came up early on. Uh, Jackson Wolf hit me with his finisher while literally Ace and Jacob Knox were going through a move. And I was like, oh, this is perfect. I'll just lay down and take the count. One, two, three. <laughs> uh, it wasn't the perfect match, and it wasn't the match I wanted, but it was the match we got. And I just jumped on the opportunity to basically say, oh, this is my out, this is my out, this is this is my out for the match. I know where I'm going. So Jackson Wolf won the title. Um, Luke Harper cashed in on him, and Jackson can take it. And actually, it it seems a bit rushed that Jackson would be handed the title, considering that he hasn't had any other titles aside from the Cruiserweight Championship three times. But now it throws Jackson in the spotlight. It throws Luke Harper in the spotlight. And I was sitting there to myself thinking, no matter what I'm going to do, one of these four guys, early on when I was planning this, like one of these four guys is going to be stuck fighting Luke Harper. And that's not a knock on Luke Harper. I'm just saying that the casual people aren't going to sit there and say, wow, this is a match I can get really excited for. You have to be really invested into it or really care about either one. So I was thinking, you know what? It shines a spotlight on Jackson. It's going to be a tough pairing no matter who I went with against uh, Luke Harper. But gives a little feud for Jackson to get some development. Uh, holds off ace. Uh, Jacob Knox, he's focused more on Jack McKay now. EC3, Austin Arrogance go through a trial of uh, a low point. Uh, so the dynasty, just when you think they've hit their high point, all of a sudden, bam, two episodes later, they get knocked down a huge peg. So for EC3 and Austin Arrogance, it's about recovering and trying to get back to where they were. And now the question becomes, and I, I wish I could do both or all these episodes back to back, because you see uh, this weekend, Class 4 wins the WWE Championship on SmackDown. 
uh, EC3 gets a huge win over uh, over Cole Quinn on NXT. So you're still thinking, man, these guys are at a high point. They're they've reached their high point. They've reached their high point. They lose back to uh, Cole Quinn and uh, Christian. So it's like, whoa, okay, that was a bit unexpected. And now it's, and then you could jump right into Survivor Series and think, all right, you know, how's that going to affect Class Bar for his match? I wish I could do it back to back to back to back, but it didn't happen. So we're stuck here where you kind of just have to hold that pin uh, and just remember that uh, for Survivor Series. But yeah, it's supposed to kind of give uh, the Dynasty a little up and down uh, little curve to their dominance. But yeah, if you guys have any more questions um, or can think of anything... You know, put it down in the comments below and I'll try to answer it the best I can. Uh, I plan to do... I plan to do... Uh, I was thinking about doing a Survivor Series match card. I don't know if... If you guys want that as well, let me know. I can try making it during the week. Um, before Survivor Series. If not, totally understandable. Uh, but nonetheless, I want to thank you all who did listen in to this video. Sorry that it got so long. Uh... Leave a like and subscribe to the channel, of course, if you wish. But most importantly, and as always, suit up, Matt Army. I'll see you.